<laughs> My ass is covered too, thank you. His legacy, his disgraceful legacy, is corruption and it wants to You should be ashamed of yourself. Why should I be ashamed? You're on your way to hell. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're on your way to hell. You're the one needs Jesus Christ. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're being controlled. You're enslaved by the Democrats. You should be ashamed of yourself. Falling for the lie. That's why you're wearing your mask because you're falling for the lie. That's why you're wearing the mask because you're afraid, aren't you? In fear. You're in fear. You need it. You need to fear Jesus. You need to fear Jesus. You need to fear Jesus. That's what you need to fear. Jesus is in control. Remember that. Jesus is in control. He's controlling all this while you're scared with your mask on. You know, Jesus wants to talk. I just want to thank you. What I'm saying today is you deserve a couple of things. So I guess they decided to go back there and regroup and try to figure out what they're going to do now. Political affiliation is. We have to make common cause for the future Oregonians of tomorrow. <laughs> and that's about it. Thank you for your time. God bless America. God bless the state of Oregon. And God bless Seaside. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, that Antifa, do you uh, have anything to say about how much you love America? Do you have anything to say? Anything positive to say about your country? About your fellow Americans? Because I know you disagree with me and you have these preconceived notions about me, but I am always willing to reach out to other fellow Americans in good faith. And this is always the obligation of every American to give everybody a fair chance to speak up. Does nobody in Seaside not have friends that haven't got unemployment checks? Nobody, nobody knows anybody here that hasn't got their unemployment checks yet. Do none of you people know anybody that's not going bankrupt, not tomorrow, not next month. Do you not know anybody in this town that's going bankrupt today? I yeah, I do too, sister. I know them all over the coast. All right, that's why we're here. That's a protest. This is a rally for freedom. You're a fascist. You want the microphone? fascist. Hey guys, I got a permit. I got a permit to be here. It's honestly, I mean this. I encourage you guys to get a permit too and come out and speak. I really mean that. And I hope you do. And say that. Say that. Would you, I mean that. Say that. I will. Her name is Cheryl. Thank you. And the speech that she's about to give is from her own children who are in high school and how this has affected them. And I'm really glad that Cheryl came out to speak for the youth because we really need to hear what our youth is speaking about. We need to know what they're thinking because it's not just about the adults, it's about our children. Thank you. All right, so I chose not to bring my children out today because of all the threats that were made. So I'm here on their behalf and I am their voice. And I think a lot more of us American parents need to stand up and do what's right and be their voice. So I'm going to uh, start mine. And I want to uh, start out by, this is uh, written by a high school senior. And uh, I hope that you guys pay attention because I think that we are not realizing how much this is affecting our children. I don't think you realize how I much it wrong. affects our town. Not of money or possessions, but instead memories and experiences that every class before me had and every class after me will. The moments and memories that your parents and grandparents tell you you'll never forget, I won't ever have. 
I don't get to walk the halls as a high school student. I don't get to get my senior trip. I don't have to get, I don't get my, to have my goddamn high school graduation. But at least we still have our pop shops and our liquor stores open, right? Yes. What would we do without those? Yes, yes. Well, what about my entire class with difficult online classes and a very minimal help? Quarantine. Or how about the seniors who were relying on scholarships from the spring sports? Quarantine. How about the seniors who were relying on summer work to help pay for college? Quarantine or work in a store that could expose you to the very thing that our governor is trying so hard to protect us from. And you are doing, and are you doing anything to help the seniors who have caved into depression from not being able to experience a milestone in their lives that everyone has gotten? No, quarantine. But as you go shopping, enjoy yourself walking into that dispensary, liquor store, or grocery store. I think that, I think that Governor Brown has really, really made an impact. I think that, that she, what she's not realizing is, is that the, the younger generation and, and the youth are waking up and they're seeing what's really going on. And they are proud of their American history. And what are we teaching them as parents? You guys are out here cussing at us and death threats are being made. What are we teaching our children, our future generation? I think that, I think honestly, that regardless of your political views, that we can all agree that our children are our common ground because everybody wants what's best for them. So I got a guy from out here from Lincoln City. He's from the coast as well. I mean, come on, we're all we're all together, guys. I'm really, I have to say one more time, I want to thank you, every single one of you guys, even the ones up there. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. <laughs> and so this is my friend David. He's from Lincoln City, and he has a couple of things he would like to say. I respect this guy, and he has a wonderful family, and I'm pretty sure he's got something good to say. Here you go. Take it away. All right, thank you, Haley. Sorry, not very good at public speaking. Um, what, I came out, what I came out here to say today is that not unlike a lot of you who live here in Seaside, I also live in a tourist community, maybe one that's actually has more rooms per capita than you guys do here. And we've been struggling with a lot of the same issues. I struggle with the same issues. Two months ago when this all started, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off thinking it was the end of the world. I actually stood out in front of my city at the entrance on spring break weekend with a gas mask and a flag that said go home because we were inundated with a lot of tourists and I was scared but I was also ignorant because I didn't educate myself and once I started educating myself and once I looked into the facts and once we went through quarantine and we were able to see what the real numbers are and what's really going on right. and that Oregon is not going to end up having a huge problem because we only have four million people in this entire entire state we, we're not gonna have the same outbreaks. And I was worried about my hospital being overrun. We have a hospital with 15 beds. It's not meant to hold a bunch of people. I had all these same fears, but getting educated is where it's at and not being afraid. And remembering, and, and, and over these last 60 days, I've been watching my town slowly die. Yeah. I have been watching people who have not been able to get their unemployment. I have been watching people who have no means, that have had to line up at food banks to feed their families because their right to have their business open was taken away. But you certainly can have a big business open, you can have a Safeway open, you can have a Walmart open, but these small businesses were told you have to shut your doors because it's not safe and that's wrong. That's wrong. They had every right to be open just as much as the big box stores. You're gonna tell me it's all right for 300 people to pack into a Walmart, 300 people to pack into a Safeway, but mom and pop down the road who have their, their antique store or their, their, their taffy shop or their small restaurant, they're supposed to shut down and not let people in? because it's dangerous? You wanna tell me what's more dangerous is going to a small mom and pop store or going to a big corporation where everybody's standing in lines. Yeah. You know, and, and I was, I was I, I'm, the reason I'm out here today is because my city is starting to slowly open up. We're opening our lodging back up on June 1st. There's restrictions in place. There's things to keep people safe. And, and the, the fear's gotta go away. You gotta remember these people who come from other places, and trust me, I know all about tourists. I deal with tourists every summer. I've lived in Lincoln City for 30 years. I deal with tourists every single summer, every spring break. I know what it's like. I feel you guys deep down. I, I know how it is. I know how they could be sometimes. They don't, we don't feel like they always respect our communities. 
and they don't respect what's going on there. And I understand that we're small communities and we don't have the same resources that larger places do, but at the same time, these are the same people that keep us fed. They're the ones that bring the money over the summers. Right. So in a way, you know, you gotta kinda not bite the hand that feeds you. And, and there's no reason to bite the hand that feeds you because you know what? The places where the outbreaks are mainly happening is inside of nursing homes and other places like that and, and some, some processing plants where everybody's really close together. It's not happening out here on the beach. I don't see the coronavirus out here on this beach. At a processing plant, yes, they, and you need to take care of those. That's what you got to do. But you can't shut. You can't. You can't keep things shut down, and you can't keep on giving into the fear. You guys need to educate yourselves about the virus. Educate yourselves about the spread. Be safe about it. Open back up. But Kate Brown has no right to let to to be the the person who decides who gets to stay open and who gets to stay closed. Every American, ha every American businessman and, 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 this, and people in this city have the right to decide. You want to walk down the street, down to the shops down here and tell which ones you want to pick and choose which ones get to open and which ones don't about who's worthy to make a living for their family and who's not? You want to decide for them? Are you willing to give up your money to them to help them pay their mortgage or their bills? Instead, you want to come out here and you want to tell the very people that are going to come here and support your community from other places to go away. And you know what, that can end up coming back to bite you guys in the ass real hard because you know what, it's going to show up on the news that people in Seaside showed up and didn't want people coming to their town. Their tourist town that relies on tourist dollars. So without tourist dollars, this place dries up and dies. It would be dead. They don't allow us to log the forest. They limit how we can fish. They limit everything else. So what's left? What's left? Tourist and pot shops.